lies before me. Hello, hope you enjoyed that intro, and welcome to a Baldur's Gate 3 build video. In this guide, I'll be going over my one turn kill assassin build. This build is an extremely front loaded damage deal. When I say front loaded, I quite literally mean you're going to deal more damage in the first round than you're going to deal in like the next five rounds combined. Of course, you know, if you deal that much damage in the first round, the combat's probably not even gonna last five rounds. So let's get into the build. I'll be starting with character creation and levels, and I'll move into the items to look out for throughout the game. So, let's go to character creation. First things first for character creation, your character race and background are fully at your discretion. There is no racial choice that gives any inherent advantages to this build that are so important that it's necessary. For your ability scores, it's mostly up to you, the only important stat is that you have to have at least 16 dexterity. If you know about the permanent ASI you can get in Act 1, you can go with 17 dex instead. However, I prefer the following stat spread of 8 strength, 16 dexterity, 14 constitution, 8 intelligence, 12 wisdom, and 16 charisma. For our levels, we will be building as follows. Please note, this is not our finalized build, as you will need to respec into that build at level 12. If you're wondering why I am choosing to level this way instead of as the finalized build, is because this build will allow you to maintain the assassin playstyle for the entirety of your playthrough, whereas if you followed the main build all the way through, the playstyle would be very different for Acts 1 and 2. At level 1, we start as a rogue. You can alternatively start as a ranger, but I prefer to start as the rogue, or the bonus skill proficiencies and expertise. For levels 2-6, to six, we multi-class into ranger. The finer details of this build, such as your ranger favorite enemy, natural explorer, and spell choices are all up to you and what you want. The exception, of course, being your fighting style, which you acquire at level 3. For this, you will choose the archery fighting style. At level 4, we take the subclass Gloomstalker, granting us access to our dread ambusher bonus attack. And at level 5, we gain our feat, for which we will be taking Sharpshooter. Because our attack roll bonuses are not that high at this point in the game, we will be keeping that passive turned off for the time being, but do remember to turn it back on when you think it will gain value. At level 6, we attain extra attack, marking the end of our foray into ranger, and signaling that it's time to return to leveling rogue. Put two levels into rogue and go the assassin subclass. This grants us the assassinate ambush passive, guaranteeing us crits against surprise enemies. And for our final 3 levels before we respec, we will take 3 levels in Fighter and go the Champion subclass for Action Surge and the increased crit chance. Now, after respecking, we still take 3 levels in Rogue for Assassin and 3 levels in Ranger for Gloomstalker. However, we replace our Fighter levels and 2 of our Ranger levels for 6 levels in Bard College of Swords. Our main reason for doing this is to gain access to Slashing Flourish from the College of Swords subclass, which will allow us to effectively deal about 2.5 times more damage with our attacks. The reason for 6 levels in Bard, even though we gain the subclass at level 3, is to get us both extra attack and font of inspiration, allowing us to replenish our Bardic inspiration charges after short rests, thus allowing us to use Slashing Flourish more often. And that's the build. Now before I get on with the items, let me just give a quick spoiler warning, as I will be showing items from all the acts, and I will be explaining where to get them, so there will be some minor spoilers about some events that occur in later acts, so if you haven't played them and you don't want to get spoiled, stop watching now, and warned. 
before I do get into the items as well, I'd like to just very quickly go over consumables, because I don't really want to get too into them, because I don't really use consumables myself. But the important ones to keep in mind are any poison, all the poisons are really good. I'm using the purple worm toxin here for the example, but all the poisons are useful. Uh, potions of speed. That's not just good for this build, these potions are just completely overpowered the entire game, regardless of what class you are. Similarly, for the elixir of bloodlust, that's also true. Uh, this elixir is extremely powerful on any character. It's extremely powerful on this character as well, because you are pretty much guaranteed to kill someone on your first round of combat. Uh, elixir of viciousness is also not bad, as it reduces your crit chance, or sorry, increases your crit chance by reducing the crit roll. And Potions of Invis are also good for positioning. So, with that said, let's move on to items. So, to showcase these items, I've enlisted the help of my three assistants. First, we have Quincy, Victoria, and Yenna. So, first, let's check in with Quincy for the items from Act 1. Quincy. Where are the items? <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Had to give Quincy a uh, stern talking to. So, uh, anyways, we have our new assistant, Tambourine, with the items from Act 1. For our weapons, there are two weapons of note in Act 1 Giant Breaker and Herald, both of which are acquired from the Zentrum, and both of which can be used throughout all of Act 1 and 2. For helmets, the Shadow of Menzo Baranzin gives us a nice invis skill to avoid damage. For gauntlets, there are two, the Gloves of Archery are our offensive option, and the Gloves of Missile Sneering, which are our defensive option. For chestplates, the Spider Silk Armor will be our best choice. For boots, the Boots of Speed and Disintegrating Nightwalkers both give us movement, same with the Amulet of the Sea Step. For rings, the fetish of Calendar and Smooth Hands gives us more invis. The Caustic Band gives us more damage. And our final item of note is the Deathstalker Mantle. Now, onto the items from Act 2. For clarification, I will be considering the Mountain Pass as a part of Act 2 rather than Act 1. So, starting once again with the weapons the Crossbow of Arcane Force can be a decent alternative to either Herald or Giant Breaker due to its arcane munich skill. The Knife of the Undermountain King is a good primary for the increased crit chance. In a similar vein, the Covert Cowl and Dark Justicia Helmet both increase crit chance further. Alternatively, the Circle of Hunting can be good for extra damage when using Hunter's Mark. For Gloves, the Gloves of Dexterity can give us a slight dex increase and damage increase, but our better option is the Dark Justicia Gauntlet, which gives us a more consistent damage increase. For Armor, the Graceful Cloth can be good to increase our dex, but do keep in mind that this is clothing and not armor, so your AC will be lower. The Dark Justicia Half Plate gives us a better AC and some nice roll bonuses. For boots, the evasive shoes can be good for the slight increase in AC, since this build generally does use light armor. For amulets, the amulet of branding gives us a one-time defense penetration. The amulet of harpers is a good defensive option. And the surgeon's subjugation amulet can trivialize some fights against humanoid enemies. For rings, the strange conduit ring can give us some extra damage. Similarly, the Shadow Cloaked Ring can also give us some situational extra damage. The Shifting Corpus Ring can give us some nice defensive spells to use. The Ring of Free Action gives us resistance to some crowd control. And the Risky Ring gives us guaranteed advantage on all of our attacks. The Killer Sweetheart gives us a guaranteed crit, which can be powerful if combined with an item such as the Surgeon's Amulet for the guaranteed Paralyze. And finally, the Cloak of Cutting Broom can help us avoid damage in large-scale fights. That's it for Act 2, now on to Act 3. For Act 3, we have a lot of items to get through, so starting with the melee weapons, 
Old Snap can be a decent secondary if you're reversed using a shield for roleplay reasons. For our primary weapon, Bloodthirst is just a better version of Knife of the Inner Mountain King. And for our secondary, Rhapsody will be the best secondary for this build. Do keep in mind that you can stack Scarlet Remittance on objects such as crates and chairs. For our bows, Deadshot gives us increased crit chance as well as increased proficiency modifier for our attack rolls. And Gaunter Mail is the highest damaging bow in the game and is probably the best in slot for this build. If you prefer to use heavy crossbows however, the Fabricated Arbalist and the Hellfire Engine crossbow can both be pretty good options. For our helmets, Saravox Horned Helm and the Mask of Soul Perception are both equally pretty good. For our gauntlets, the Legacy of the Masters can be good until you can acquire the Crater Flesh Gloves or the Bone Spike Gloves, which can both amplify our damage. For our armor, the Elegant Studded Leather is a nice defensive option, while for offensive options, the Ballist Armor is our best choice. Do keep in mind, it is possible to position in such a way that you can apply the Aura of Murder while not imposing disadvantage on your ranged attacks. For our boots, the Helldusk Hell Boots and the Boots of Persistence both give us CC resistance and increased movement. For amulets, the Fey Semblance Amulet can offer uh, an offset to the Risky Ring if you choose to use it. For our rings, the Band of Mystic Scoundrel will allow us to use our bonus action to cast many of our Bard spells such as Invisibility. This will increase our versatility. And for cloaks, the Cloak of Displacement is a nice defensive cloak option, whereas the Shade Slayer Cloak is our nice offensive cloak. And that's all for the items. And that's everything. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and comment if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Okay, the joke's over, Quincy. You can get him now. Come on, Quincy. Get up. Get up, Quincy. Come on. Okay, real funny, buddy. Come on, get up, Quincy. Get up. Come on, Quincy. Get up.